Hey guys, it's John. This is a Rad2 video. In this video, we're going to be talking about the best methods for XP farming in Rad2. Okay, so just saying real fast, this isn't probably the best method. This is just the method that I use. I'm sure that there's lots of cheesier ways to actually farm XP, and I'm sure people will let us know in the comments what those actually are. <laughs> but like I said, this is the methods that I use, and I don't really have to worry about XP like really ever. I actually don't even really farm XP at all. I did in the beginning, but I don't really do it anymore. Okay, so the first thing we need to talk about is enchants for your gear. So the major things that we want to be looking at are these enchants right here. We have Sage's Blessing, which basically increases XP. It says it also adds exhaustion from time to time. I don't really notice it uh, really at all. Um, I'm assuming that means it takes more food from your saturation. I don't know. I don't really notice it. You could put this Sage's Blessing on all your gear, though. You can put it on all your armor and then your weapon. And I have it on my shield also. You can also put it on your tools and whatnot. Um, but you know, just armor weapons and shield is pretty good. Second one is insight increases XP gain when using the item. This one goes on your helmet, helmet enchant. And this last one boosted, it just says boosted experience gain. Again, it goes on your helmet. Uh, it should boost your XP a lot. There's also another enchant called knowledge of ages. The only reason why you probably shouldn't use this one though, uh, is because it makes enemy drops. Uh, it converts them into actual experience. This goes up to level three. It's also kind of rare. I believe it's a treasure enchant. Okay, no, it's not a treasure enchant. Um, it's really hard to find though. I haven't really found it that often. Um, this is probably more for end game when you don't really care about enemy drops, you know, and you just want even more XP, then you should probably use this. But if you actually care about drops, you want to be using only these three, Sage's Blessing, Insight, and Boosted. The second thing we're going to be talking about is the Bobble Trinkets. The major one that we're going to be looking at is this one in here. It's called the Emblem of the Monster Slayer. This emblem is super good. It basically gives you more damage against undead creatures, 10% damage against other aggressive creatures, plus one looting level. And the most important thing is it gives you uh, double XP from all slain monsters. I'm assuming this works for bosses too. I haven't tested it by taking it off, but I'm assuming it means bosses also. It's not too bad to make. You just need access to the nether. The worst thing is probably just the netherite ingot. Soul Lantern, Skeleton, Nether Ingot, Blaze Powder. It's not that bad. You should be able to get this pretty easy on, like early on in the game, as soon as you get to the Nether. Um, so yeah, this is probably the biggest thing you can do. The second item we'll be looking at is the Golden Hook. You can actually wear two of these. It goes on your hand slot, so you can just put on two. It just says increases XP drop by creatures, especially those you've not recently killed. I have no idea how much it actually increases your XP. I just know that they do stack if you have two of them. And the last thing we'll be looking at is basically getting to the higher level difficulties. Once you get to the higher level difficulties, for example, when you get an expert mode, you get increased 20% uh, XP. And then once you get into master mode, you get increased 50% XP. I think it used to be 60. Um, but yeah, so you want to try and get to master mode as soon as possible, uh, as long as you have the gear to support it, because that will also give you a pretty sizable XP boost. That's pretty good, 50%. One last thing I also forgot to mention is that you should have an XP backpack. You just pretty much just get a netherite backpack or diamond, whatever you can afford. Uh, put on a tank upgrade, an experience pump upgrade. Make sure you put on a bunch of stack upgrades. You can just use diamond stack upgrades. If you want, you can use the netherite ones, but they're really expensive. You can just settle for the diamond ones. That'll end up, you'll be able to store 3,800 levels, which is pretty darn good for whatever you need. Um, and then just go ahead and use this to store your XP. Okay, so the first method we're actually going to talk about, we're actually getting to the part we're going to talk about how to get XP. It's pretty much just farming the Wither and farming the Ender Dragon. They pretty much give a pretty good sizable chunk of XP when you kill them, especially with all these boosts on. I would think that the Wither is probably the fastest because he spawns really fast. You can kill him a lot faster than the Ender Dragon. Um, so we'll start with him. Uh, what you want to do is, in order to get Wither Skulls, you want to make a scythe from Spartan Weaponry. There are these scythes right here. As you can see, it actually says Spartan Weaponry. Um, you could just make a diamond one or netherite if you can use it. Or, you know, if you're at iron level, then just make an iron one. The reason we're using these ones is because it says it has a 25% chance of dropping a head or skull when killing a mob. I'm not sure if it's actually 25% chance. It seems like it's a really good chance, though. Um, so you definitely want to make one of these scythes from Spartan Weaponry. And then you should have a better chance of getting Wither Skulls from the Wither Skeletons. You should be able to find almost any old dungeon in Rad 2 that has <laughs> Wither Skeletons in them. But like I said, they're actually pretty common in most of the Rad 2 dungeons. So yeah, after farming for a bit, you should be able to get a sizable amount of Wither Skeleton skulls pretty easily. After that, you could just summon the Wither and go ahead and kill him. 
you should get about 80 to 90 levels per kill. Sometimes I was getting a little bit extra than that, but it's pretty fast. He spawns really fast, and if you have really strong gear, you should be able to kill him really fast too. And the final last method we're going to be talking about is obviously hunting the Ender Dragon. Um, so in order to spawn the Ender Dragon uh, repeatedly, you'll need to make End Crystals. And in order to make End Crystals in Rad 2, it takes Gas Tier and Rose crystal so in order to get gas here you could pretty much get gas here from killing monsters uh in the nether just randomly i think like minotaurs or something or i think the piglins too if you're not having luck with that you can also go and buy them from the nether coin shop over here you can trade one nether coin for two gas tiers so you just need to get at least two nether coins to get four gas tiers once you have the four gas tiers you can make a small gas gate pearl which just takes four gas tiers plus a spirit orb you get these pretty commonly from destroying spawners and also kills i believe um, this will summon a bunch of gas that you can kill and once you actually complete the whole thing you usually get about like 50 or more gas tiers um, you probably are going to need a bow and then, uh, or else a leap spell if you're going to use melee. It's not too bad to do the gas gate pearl. It's pretty quick, pretty easy. Um, and you should have pretty basically unlimited gas tiers. You'll never have to worry about gas tiers again. And then for the rose crystal component of the end crystal, you'll have to go to the crystal crag biome in the end. So just make sure you make a nature's compass with the nature's compass you'll be able to search for the crystal crag biome and uh go mine a bunch of the rose crystals make sure also that you use a silk touch pickaxe so that way you can just mine the whole crystal uh if you don't have a silk touch well you're gonna have to i think fortune affects the rose crystals when you mine them. i'm not sure you'll have to mine a bunch of them and then combine the crystals together uh, ideally you want to do it with the silk touch so you get a ton of rose crystals and then you can just throw them in your stash and then you won't have to worry about farming rose crystals you know for a very long time and then after that you pretty much just fight the ender dragon like normal and kill it i mean use a bow use leap spell whatever to go kill it um for the ender dragon i was averaging about like 120 to like 150 level something like that uh per kill the Ender Dragon definitely gives more XP. The only problem is, of course, is because the Ender Dragon takes a long time to spawn in because, you know, it goes through the whole animation and then, you know, actually trying to kill it sometimes takes a while. Um, so if you want max XP, definitely the Ender Dragon is the way to go. And like I said earlier, if you want fast efficiency, uh, you want to be killing the Wither because Wither is definitely a lot faster to kill than the Ender Dragon. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the video, guys. Uh, that is how to farm XP in Rad 2. Basically, once you have all these enchants, you can just pretty much farm like wherever you want to. Autumn, the dimension, is actually really good for farming too, just because of all the bandits and stuff that attack you. But if you want your XP in good sizable chunks, then I would definitely say the Wither of the Ender Dragon. But hopefully this video helps you out, guys, uh, for your farming, your XP farming needs. And thank you guys for watching. And take care. Have a good one. Bye.